Alright, what's up guys? Today I'll be breaking down all 9 of the new supers in Destiny 2 Forsaken and breaking down the damage and comparing them to one another in terms of damage per second and total damage done by each super. This time around, I'm not going to look at any exotics or anything like that, just the raw damage of each super because there's so many exotics in the game that buff super damage it's kind of hard to get them all together right now when they're all so new so one thing i want to point out before i begin this video is i'm going to be doing it on the prestige leviathan the standard bearer as you see right here and i'm going to treat him as 300 total health so each bar is 100 health for the entire bar and this is just going to be a better way to estimate the damage of each of the supers because adding up some of the numbers of the supers are basically impossible because there's so many numbers going on so i'm going to use that as an estimate so let's begin with the Burning Mole new Sunbreaker Titan. And there's two different ways to use this Titan. One is just a light attack, which where you like spin constantly and just hit him. And as you see, that's the one I'm going to start with. And it kind of is hard to lock onto the target every once in a while you go swinging away. But as you see, I did roughly one full bar. So for estimate purposes, I'm going to say that's 100 total damage. Which then, if you divide by how long it took, was 15.19 damage per second. So, there's actually a different way to use this subclass. You can also do heavy attacks by jumping in the air, then doing a right click or your RT or whatever it is on controller. And as you see, it actually results in more damage. But it's kind of harder to hit the enemy consistently. But as you see, I took off roughly half of his health. So I'm going to say that's 150 total damage. Divided by the time it took, 14.15 damage per second. Which is a little bit more total damage and a little bit faster damage also. So, that way is definitely the better way to go with this new subclass. Moving on to the new Sentinel with the Banner Shield, which is all about the Void, like, detonations. And outside of that, it's basically the same as the other Sentinel Shields. So, the best way to do it is jump combos, as you see right here. And, as you see, in 8.5 seconds, I did roughly half of his health, which is 150 total damage or 17.58 damage per second so so far the highest damage per second super i've used so far on this enemy and also you know right around half health so not bad now moving on to the new striker which is thunder crash which is the one where you go flying through the air and then just hit the guy really quick this one is probably one of my favorites on titan it doesn't do the most damage as you see it does roughly 110 total damage but it does that damage instantly because what you can do is use it right on top of an enemy and there's no activation time at all so it can do all of its damage in within one second. So what we learned on Titan so far is actually that all three of the supers are actually pretty good. Striker does all of its damage instantly, so in terms of damage per second, it is the best. But the other two can hold their own in terms of total damage output. One of them does a little bit faster than the other, but I was actually really surprised by how much damage those two subclasses put out as a whole. But now we're going to go ahead and move on to the Hunter, starting with the new Nightstalker Spectral Blades, which is like the Void version of Arc Blade from Destiny 1. Now there's two ways of doing it, one light attack and one heavy attack, so the first one I'm going to just use light attacks only, which is like the really fast rapid hits as you see right here. And this one actually surprised me, it's actually not that bad at all. It hits really fast, stuns them and all that stuff. So in total I hit roughly 130 total damage on this guy, which was 18.3 damage per second, so actually a really high damage per second for a roaming super. Now the other way to use this super is doing heavy attacks, which are honestly pretty bad i think they're mostly there just to go invisible and that's really the only reason you should ever do the heavy attack is to go invisible because the damage side of the attack is actually pretty low in terms of damage per second it wasn't that bad but the total damage was almost half that of just using light attacks now for arc strider which doesn't really change that much between any of the three paths this one i don't believe the last part does anything i don't have it unlocked myself so let me know if that changes anything but i believe all three of the paths basically are the same so you can do either light attacks as you see here which is the better version and that did roughly 100 total damage and it took roughly 10 seconds so 12.01 damage per second which isn't bad but not the best necessarily then also you can do heavy attacks which is where you jump and do the heavy attack button wherever that is for your platform and these got nerfed a lot recently so i wouldn't recommend doing heavy attacks at all with arc starter anymore as you see the numbers are pretty bad honestly for total damage the dps isn't terrible but the total damage is definitely lacking and finally moving on to the new gunslinger blade barrage i think we all know what's probably happening right now but go ahead and click the button and yeah there goes his health it was roughly 160 total damage and since you can do it all at once that's 160 damage per second so the highest damage per second and the highest total damage of any of the supers we've tested so far 
So what we've learned on the Hunter so far is Blade Barrage is by far the best super option for the Hunter, but Spectral Blades was surprisingly actually pretty good for a roaming super, but then Arc Strider was kind of left in the dust where it was decent for light attacks, heavy attacks were terrible, so I wouldn't recommend using it if your goal is super damage. Now moving on to Warlock starting with the new Dawnblade, Well Radiance. Believe it or not, this super does do damage itself. As you see when you plant the sword, it does like a few takes of 37 whenever the guy's in the like area of it. So, uh, okay, moving on to the new Voidwalker, the Nova Warp, which is like the new, like, I don't even know what, this is like the weirdest subclass I've ever seen, but it's actually not even bad. As you see, there's two different ways of using it. One, just clicking the button as fast as possible and not charging it. As you see, that's what I'm doing right here. And it kind of lasts forever, it lasts over 10 seconds, and I did roughly 110 total damage, which was 10.7 damage per second, which isn't the greatest damage per second, but it's pretty good for total damage. But there's a different way to do it, as I alluded to, you can charge it and actually double your damage. As you see here, when I like get that little charge and then release it, it does double the damage. Also doing it this way enlongs your super and actually makes your super last longer, which for some scenarios is probably better. But as you see, it raised the total damage I did to 150, which is very good, but it also didn't really change the damage per second that much, it just kind of like made the super last longer. But for total damage, that's definitely the way to go. Moving on to the final super to test, the new Stormcaller Chaos Reach. This one I expect to be one of the better supers in the game, so let's go ahead and test it out. On this target, it actually hits a lot of damage, as you see. So I'm going to say that was roughly 160 total damage, and it took almost 4 seconds, so that's 42.72 damage per second. So the third best damage per second super we've seen, and tied for the most damage overall. So there was a lot going on in this video so far. So what we learned was that each class had one really good damage per second super, that being Blade Barrage, Thunder Crash, and also Chaos Reach. All three of those supers did their damage very quickly, then Chaos Reach and Blade Barrage also did the most damage for their class also. So those two supers really stand out among all the rest as by far the best two supers in the game. Then among all the roaming supers which lack in terms of damage per second, well, there was a few that could keep up in terms of total damage, things like the new Sunbreaker, things like the new Sentinel, things like Spectral Blades, and also Nova Warp. I was actually surprised by how many of the supers in the game could actually like compete with each other and how almost evenly balanced they all are. The only one that really stuck out for me was the new Arc Staff. It was kind of lacking in my opinion. But I also know Raiden Flux would probably balance that back out and make it one of the better supers in the game. But at the same time, you could use different exotics for different supers and you could compare it that way too. But that's a conversation for another video. I know a lot of the math in this video is kind of jank and mostly estimates, but the purpose of it was to compare the supers and I think it did the job decently well to do that comparison. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about all these supers, which one is your favorite, which one do you think you're going to start using because of this video, and all that stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching, catch you guys next time. Hello, Failsafe. You're familiar with this place. Oh yes, quite. The Vex were very active there when the Exodus Black first arrived on Nessus. The Vex that murdered my crew came from there. I'm sorry that you... Karkin is getting dangerously skilled at manipulating this Vex architecture. Maybe if we catch him, he can give Kate a lesson or two. <laughs>